fucking weird. I listen to the podcast, I'm like, fuck, is that what I sound like? <laughs> yeah, me too, I hate it. Yeah, I also don't like my voice. Hello, everyone. Welcome to No Results, No Excuses, where we talk fitness, nonsense, and partial facts. My name is Matthew Bauman, and my co-hosts are... Justin Swart and Courtney Dick. Still me. Yes. Still the three of I us. I can't get rid of them. <laughs> oh, yes. Call me the juggernaut. <laughs> Justin tried, uh, Matt tried to get rid of us. <laughs> it was just going to be me talking. Yeah, that's yeah I people... actually feel like Matt got us involved just to get the ball rolling, and he actually wants us to leave now. Yeah, that's yeah. some listener feedback, apparently. It said, get rid of uh, Courtney and Justin. <laughs> just keep Matt. <laughs> it was just my wife. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, Matt has one follower. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thudcast. <laughs> Thudcast. Yeah. Okay, guys, we uh, got a few things lined up. We uh, prepared a bit. Oh, good. We, yeah, well, yeah, well done, guys. I yeah. didn't prepare. I'm just following your lead. <laughs> Justin was started preparing at 11 o'clock. Yes, last 11 o'clock. Like, I saw him on the, the dock for, uh, I think, about 30 seconds. Yeah. And I checked, changed his street, and he had done nothing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I just clicked on the link. <laughs> he, was, he was too busy. Well, um, what do you do at 11 o'clock at night? Yeah, what's um, going on there? Yeah, that's usually uh, when I've had some dinner, sat yeah. down after my shower, and... Um, you know, just uh, catching up with the admin from the day. Yeah. I, 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 would, I want to put a GoPro on his head and just leave it for the day. <laughs> see what he's doing. And just see a time lapse of it. What's going on. <laughs> These guys don't believe that I'm as busy as I say. Yeah, we don't no, know no, what's no. going on. He's not the, he needs to sleep. You need to sleep though, Justin. Yeah, you need to sleep. Yeah. No, really well, that's what I did last time. I thought, you know, let me let me do my due diligence. Click the link so I make my co-host happy. Yeah. And then at about 11.05, I thought, you know what? I should go and sleep. Yeah. So I did that. Because you're supposed to get like eight or nine hours of sleep a day. That's true. Like you listen to all these guys, these competitive guys, they're like, ah, oh, I sleep 10, 11 yes. hours a day. Brooke Wells says she does nine hours every day. What no. Fuck. Yeah. Uh, Froning, I'm sure Froning said in the past when he was an individual, he was sleeping like 10, 11 hours a day. Justin just sleeps six hours a day. Look at him, he's yawning. <laughs> <laughs> the idea of sleep is so wonderful. Yeah, yeah no. Listen, sleep is, sleep is great. I need to get more of it. That yeah. is true. Um, on average, when, uh, about seven to eight hours. That's about okay. where I'm at. Well, as long as you're pushing eight hours, I think it's okay. But you should probably try and bring that average up by an hour. Do you know that to get eight hours of sleep, you got to be in bed for about ten hours? What are you doing for two hours in bed? Yeah, I'm like him. I just sit on my phone. Yeah, no, but, no, 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 but I'm right. A, you got to factor in how much time it takes you to fall asleep. And then fall asleep. Yes. B, if you get up multiple times to go to the toilet. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, perhaps you have a bad dream. Yeah. Um, <laughs> or a nightmare. You just lie awake after. And uh, maybe your girlfriend like elbows you multiple times in the face. Hey, she's. <laughs> That's dangerous. <laughs> Does this happen often? Yeah. Yeah. How did these come up I, as examples? I'll, I'll be. I'll, I'll be <laughs> honest. A yeah. queen size bed is not enough space for a couple. Yeah, I don't know like about a, a divider. At either two single beds put <clears throat> side by side. Uh-huh. So you, you know, you can kind of like limit. The, the, the disruptions yeah. Limit the or, or a king size bed yeah, so we have a queen size bed and uh, we fit fine even even though at like 2 o'clock in the morning the child comes and climbs in there yeah, we got so the same problem that from, sounds horrible from 2 o'clock there's 3 of us in the bed and I, I still sleep got a kid. I still sleep many hours listen so, I'm telling you now I'm going to upgrade to a king size with extra width you're going to have to when the baby comes along yeah, what baby is just having a baby? Uh, listen, announcement. <laughs> and the partial fact. Uh, after, after who, who had a baby last time? Um, Nicole. 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 Nicole oh, it's Justin. Just making yes. announcements yeah. every week. Okay, I've managed to open the dock, um, and we are starting on some CrossFit related news. CrossFit news, yeah, I've got some good news. You've heard of the Torian Pro? Uh, Matt thought it was a tennis tournament. Yes. <laughs> but it's not. It's a real CrossFit tournament. Okay. It's like one of Australia's big CrossFit tournaments. So there's so some good news that I read somewhere um, in that they've, they've sold out their 4,000 seat arena okay. and they're moving to a 5,000 seat arena for the Torian mm. Pro, which starts in like uh, almost two months. What is um, a 5,000 seat arena to give me an idea? Well, to give you an idea, like the, the Coliseum at the games, yeah. uh, that's 10,000 seats. Okay. So okay. for like a little CrossFit comp, and it, it's not sanctioned, I don't think. So oh, for so a, just a no for lols. Yeah, just for lols. So like for a little CrossFit comp to sell out four thousand and move to five thousand seats, that's big. Yes. So I think that's something positive. Shows that the the interest is there. So maybe next year they'll uh, become sanctioned and we'll have twenty nine events to attend. Yeah. Ooh, so you're they'll... saying we could just talk about CrossFit only on the podcast and we should get about five thousand followers. Or yes, we're going to talk about CrossFit twenty nine times. Twenty nine times. <laughs> yeah. So it's half the year we're going to talk about CrossFit. So that's good. <laughs> 5,000 uh, spectators is, is big. 
Uh, I don't think we've, we have that many locally. No. So that's mm-hmm. quite good. Um, we were going to talk about the Aphrodite Games, but then we realized that by the time this comes out, it'll be done. 11 days. Yeah. So the Aphrodite Games is happening today is the 21st of September. Um, and uh, our friend Alan is there. Yeah, he's doing pretty well. Yeah, he's doing pretty well. Mick Stucky is there. He's doing pretty well. I think Mick is in the top five or something like that. Also for lols. Also for lols, yeah, but just for a good time. Not sanctioned. It's not sanctioned, no. Uh, Damien Janssen van Rensburg was supposed to be there, um, and he pulled out. Is that a friend of the show? Yes, that's that one. <laughs> the guy that we never heard of. No, <laughs> but he pulled out, and then I saw that, I thought he was injured maybe, but then I saw he's actually doing the Elfit qualifiers. Yes. Which is yeah. an Egyptian... Egyptian one, yeah. Elfit. Sanctional. Elfit. E-L-F-I-T. Oh, which is L. So there seems to be like two things. There's like the Elfit, there's like the, the, the fun one. Yeah. And then there's the Elfit sanctioned event. Okay. Which is in April next year, as far as I can remember. So they're doing the qualifiers for that. And uh, AJ Fisser is also doing the qualifiers. For the sanctional or for the, the local throwdown? I'm not it's sure. Quite, to me, it looked like it was for the local one, but that wouldn't make sense. That I mean, wouldn't make sense. I was going to say, he's got to be doing the, the sanction. Yeah, it's got to be Justin's busy signing up right now. Justin's signing up, yes. No, I'm actually on the Aphrodite leaderboard. I want to <laughs> tell our listeners all is. what's happening. Yeah, see where Alan is. So in the past, <clears throat> we'll see where Alan is in the past. When this well, we have up. Mick Stocky in third. Ooh, and good. we have Mr. Alan Fowlis yeah. sitting in 19th. 19th, after day I think, one. I think he had a bit of a tough uh, third event with the handstand walk. As you guys should know, yeah. his Alan fell off uh, a rope recently yes. and fell quite badly on his wrist. So mm. he, I think he was sitting sixth after two events. And then he had to inevitably walk on his hands, which yeah. he should not be doing. But yeah. he had to push through the pain. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, now it's going to be a big fight up the leaderboard over the next couple of events for him. Yeah. So who's the, who are we looking at to be the winner? The top, who is Arampa. the big name here? So, no, Mikko Arampa is in the 35 to 39 K, uh, uh, kg. So, he's just... He's He's going against the kids. He, against Casey. Yeah, he's... <laughs> Yo, what the hell is Casey still doing in Cape Town? He should be in Cyprus. <laughs> yeah. um, but essentially, I think you could be looking at uh, these four names. Uh, Lazar Dukic. Dukic. Dukic, yeah. if you pronounce it properly. Uh, he actually got some major penalties in the Open uh, in the first 19.1 workout really? for the wall ball uh, rowing workout right. um, for That's not going good. below parallel for uh, many of his wall balls. Very tight. Um, but Hands yeah, he face. seems to have addressed that. He's in first place. Yeah. We have, uh, yes, and there was a workout with him. Oh, no, no, no. That's something else. That's we have Alex Katolis, who did quite well in the Dubai Fitness uh, Championship. How do you know these people? I've never heard of these people before. And so then... Justin does on his phone at, at 11, 11 o'clock, o'clock at night. Yeah. I track all my competitors. Yeah. And uh, then we have uh, Mr. Mick Stocky in third. Yeah. Um, Beautiful stuff. So, yeah. And yeah. Nik- Nikolai Bilodeau, who went to the Games as well. Oh, cool. um, For Norway. Uh, it's coached by Birdie. Coach Birdie. Coach Birdie. Also coaches uh, Sina Krukstad. Correct. That's his girlfriend, I'm not mistaken. Really? Not, not Birdie's girlfriend, Nikolai's girlfriend. Oh, really? Oh. Uh. His name, is that a surname or is it a nickname? Coach Birdie. Coach, Coach Birdie. Birdie. Uh, Nathan, Nathan Bird. Nathan Bird. Nathan Bird. Nathan Bird. Uh, is he the gymnastics guy? Correct. Yeah. He does the preferred crosser gymnastics course. Yes. Highly yeah. recommended. There was a cool workout in this, uh, in this Aphrodite Games that I wanted to tell you guys about. So, it's cool because of the, the point structure. So... What you do is, it's a 9 minute AMRAP, 25 meter handstand walk, which is Alan will probably struggle with because of his wrist injury at the moment, uh, 2 rope climbs, which obviously he's not a fan of at the moment, and then max ring muscle ups in one attempt. So the funny thing is that for the first part, it's 50 points for the, for the handstand walk and rope climb AMRAP, and then for the ring muscle ups, max attempts, it's 100 points. <laughs> so you, you do this part and then you wait around and then you do a max ring muscle ups for even more points than the first part and max ring in sorry the in, the, mis- in the nine minutes did you say a time in the, within nine within okay so nine what minutes. you got left and then um yeah. the max is uh obviously you can break no one no. attempt one attempt one attempt max in, oh one attempt to say sorry sorry yeah yeah so some of these guys were doing like 30 muscle ups well fresh no but hang on tell me something um it's a it's a nine minute amrap yes so so you do that. Did you just did you just uh, just describe this wrong? They go twenty five meter handstand walk, yeah. two rope climbs, then they bust out like eight muscle ups and they start again. How could it be twenty five yeah. meter handstand walk? I think it's, it's so you buy in every time and then you keep contributing to your, your ring muscle up total because if you think about it, no one 
No, no, no. It's max. It's max ring muscle ups. So then, why is it AMRAP then? It's just, it's just one round. It's in just nine written in a in a rubbish way. So you're telling me that Lazar got 33 unbroken ring muscle ups? Yes. No. I don't know about that. I'm gonna go for yes. Hey. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna go for no. <laughs> <laughs> Courtney. <laughs> After that, uh, Volner did like. 27 in fresh on some post he did like a year is, he's crazy look we don't know one of the one of the the, so, the uh, games thing was 30 muscle ups 30 muscle ups. how many people went unbroken not nobody. many nobody one nobody. person <laughs> did. one person did if one i'm not mistaken <laughs> um he was a guy from australia uh yeah. not seek grove um anyway another one uh, newbury uh not newbury there's another guy anyway it's but it's called read the three australians again. okay 25 meter handstand walk yes. and two rope climbs how long is that going to take you me Quite long. Okay. <laughs> maybe how, maybe how long, a year. <laughs> how long will that take, Mick Stocky? Uh, 25, 25, meter handstand, uh, 25 meter handstand walk. That'll take him take a minute. Him like three minutes. That'll Two take minutes. him a okay. minute. It's going to be quick. Right. Then he has an attempt at max ring muscle ups. His, his triceps are fucked from the handstand walk. Yeah. And he goes and he gets... 10. Maybe 10. Yeah. Maybe. All right. Uh, uh, gets off okay. and there's right. like six minutes left. It's, he's right. So and every, he starts again. every time you start again, it's accumulation. So probably of maybe if you're lucky, you're going to get three rounds. Yes. Yeah. So the hand, so you actually have to save yourself for the for the ring muscle ups. Mm. But anyway, you gotta my, be smarty pants. My my great point was that uh, the points for the ring muscle ups are more than the it's points for the, the actual, other stuff. Yes. But then, so how does the p stuff get uh, given points? You the get, previous piece, if you're doing it about three times. Yeah, it's just the AMRAP. Whoever does the most, the most rounds. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay, the, so uh, it's the rounds plus the amount of muscle ups. So, so the question is, how fast do you attack that handstand walk? The question also is, if you if you want to win part one. Or if you want to win part two. So you can win part one by doing a 25 meter handstand walk, two rope climbs, and one ring muscle up. Yes. And just blitzing and just through. Keep mm. going. And you could do like 25 rounds of this thing in nine minutes. Yeah. But you only get 50 points. And then someone else could do three rounds, yes. but do 100 ring muscle ups and get more points. So it's clever. There's that's where strategy. That's where 50% of uh, the CrossFit community fall apart because they don't have experience. They have experience, yes. Mm. They well, they're elite guys. Yeah, they could go out too hot. They could not think about the point structure. So I think this is a that good was, one. I just made up that number. It's so a good one for thinking. So for Pegasus 1, which was um, the first uh, element, which was total reps, Yeah. Um, Alex Katolis got 54. Yeah. So how many times did he make it through that workout? Uh, so 25 meter handstand walk plus 2 is 27. So he did it twice. He did it twice. He did it twice and he got lots of uh, ring muscle ups. So he did it twice. Yeah. All right. And we go to Pegasus 2, yeah. and he got 30 ring muscle ups. That's a lot. Mm. Yeah. So are you saying that I are you saying then that he got 15 muscle ups each time? Probably. Assuming yeah. 15 and 18. Okay. Yeah, that's good. That shows what we that shows where the standard is. That's a good standard. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's how you break down a workout in 10 minutes. In 10 minutes. <laughs> Everyone's We don't really asleep. need to do any research. We can actually oh. Hop on uh, because we have yeah. experience. Yes, to, anybody that, experience. to anybody that is totally confused about the discussion we just had, uh, go onto the Aphrodite Games Instagram page yes. yeah. and re watch the event uh, through their live stream. Yeah. Um, and that should solve all your problems. And also, also watch Alan do a 130 kilo cluster, hmm. which is really, really good. No, he went for 138. Really? He, he almost got it. Almost got it. That's impressive. Um, heavy. We talk about Alan a lot because we know Alan. In case the people that are listening that have no idea why we're talking about just one guy. Because we only know a little bit. So we, we, talk about, little bit. <laughs> uh, we only talk about the little that we know. <laughs> and uh, that's Alan. Alan, <laughs> yes. And AJ. Okay, moving on. So uh, I wanted to talk about the open, the open numbers. Yes. So I had a look at this article that I found, which is from like February, March this year, after the 2019 Open. This, this Open coming up in, in like 19 days from now is the 2020 Open. Very yes. strange, because it's in 2019. But anyway. Two for one. Two for one. Uh, lucky us. But pay twice. <laughs> pay twice. Paying twice. Everything <laughs> twice. As South Africans, that's $40 in one year. Jeez. I basically had to... Jeez, um, more money you make on, then on this podcast. Yeah, I, I couldn't buy groceries. <laughs> for the week. For the week. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, jeez. It's like 600 grand for yeah. the year. Just no, for the it's, open. it's bad, man. I had to go shop at, um, at ShopRite Checkers. A boxer. Yeah. No you, more Woolworths. You score. <laughs> you save. <laughs> you save. It's a great store. It's just yellow inside. Um, and so, when the Open started in 2011, the, f the amount of people that signed up was 26,000 in the whole world. So, as we moved on through the years, we slowly got to 100,000 in 2013, 
uh, in 2016 we got to 324,000 in uh, 2017 there was 380,000 okay so keep that in mind 2017 380,000 in 2018 we had 416,000 and then in 2019 with all the changes and the deleting of Instagram no that came after the open uh, with all the changes and this, the season and uh, CrossFit's sort of view more towards health and less towards uh, less towards the sport, yeah. the open <coughs> numbers went down to 350,000 in 2019. So they were less than what they were in 2017. I can't see from here. What's the percentage change there? 14%. 14%. So it went down 14%. So this is the first time in the history of the open in the like eight years of the open that sign-ups have gone down. Uh, but it's expected. Expected. But uh, I was wondering what's going to happen now in the 2020 Open, which is coming up in the next few weeks. Do you think we'll go back up? Do you think we'll go down? I think we might go down because it's the second one for the year. and People are like, oh, I've yeah. already been in pain. Yes. I don't want to be in pain again. Yeah, 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 we can talk more about that. But I just think there's a couple of things that maybe we're overlooking. Number one, regionals no longer exist. Yes, sanctionals have replaced it. But I think there was a large, large portion of the cross community that did the Open solely to see if they could just quickly make it into regionals, you know, one year or two years. Um, I don't know if you guys would, would agree or disagree with me, but there was a time in CrossFit when um, there was a much uh, sort of stronger possibility that your sort of middle tier athletes in your gym could train really hard for a year and make the jump yeah. to regionals. Mm -hmm. Not to say that they would perform at regionals, um, but the, sport, the sport was in like a semi-professional yes. yeah. um, per period. And way more people stood a chance of working a nine to five, training CrossFit for maybe an hour to two mm. hours a day, and they could still potentially make it. I think that transition is only just coming now, where uh, you actually have to sleep for nine hours, and you've got to stop um, uh, eating shit completely, stop drinking on the weekends, train five hours a day. Yeah, yeah. But like, I would argue that that ev even if there is that percentage, it's a small percentage compared to these four hundred thousand people that signed up. So. So would, the, the other five ten percent is lost because Instagram was deleted. Well, I, I don't. Think, I, I don't think know it, why. it all it all adds up. People are pissed off. Um, the money thing. People are annoyed about the Instagram being deleted mm -hmm. and mass confusion. Yeah. So I don't know. So I, I don't know why people didn't sign up for the open. Maybe just a bit of irritation. Maybe there was just a general feeling that CrossFit management wasn't interested in them as as athletes, just interested more in their health. Do you can I add to that? Do you yeah. think uh, people got upset about the fact that the affiliate leaderboard was removed? Um, I don't know. There was the hashtag thing, and we made our own hashtag, and we followed <laughs> sure. ourselves. And yeah. I wasn't too our, But people it. stopped being interested in figuring out where their box was positioned. Where the box is? Just, I don't know. I mean, yeah. how many, like, out of your group that you train in the day, how many of them uh, care about that part? Well, it was uh, a do they care about looking at themselves on the leaderboard? I should hope so, as as aspiring as competitive CrossFitters, you know, like we, we use the, the open workouts to measure ourselves now and again in the future to see how we've improved. I mean, that I think that's where so many, so many CrossFitters are getting it wrong is that they're forgetting that it's not just about paying $20, but it's about formalizing um, five weeks of testing uh, your fitness um, and then being able to reference it you know, on a leaderboard mm. forever in a day. Cape CrossFit, for example, is going to run the Open for five weeks uh, regardless of whether you sign up or not. So let's say it is a financial issue for you. Yeah. doesn't matter. You're still going to do the Open workout. You can still record it in your, your personal diary and you can still reference it one year from now. Yeah. Um, so and, yeah. let's say this then. Let's say that Open numbers do go down again this year. Does it matter? Is it a problem? It's, it's not a problem if the boxes are still um, creating the community experience and the, the capturing of data. Yeah. Do you think that's HQ's thought? They're like, look guys, if nobody signs up for the Open, it doesn't really matter. As long as people are doing the workouts in their gym, as long as they're getting healthy and, and losing weight and, and, and staying fit, it doesn't matter if the Open goes or stays. It's like a... Well, I mean, that's what Glassman wants. He doesn't care. He just wants everyone to be healthy. Yeah. yeah. But so now, tell me, do you know that they have a new website? Yes, I've seen it. How did you find that out? 
uh, I just went to sign up for the and this, the site has just changed. Yeah, do you mean when, so when and I signed up for the, when I signed up for the open it had a very different look and yeah. feel. Yes. Yeah. I I just find it really bizarre that I found the website just because I went there directly. It was just organic. Like but the, the, there's absolutely no reason I would know that they've made any changes to it and made it really pretty. They've, they've, they've made it really cool um, and they've got a little like a, a, a media pack where you can go use stickers and um, what they're called? Chronographs. Or, you know, the little, yeah, we can design icons. your own flags. You can, yeah, yeah all sorts yeah. of stuff. Yeah. No one knows because no one's talking about it. Yeah. No one knows. There's, so, I mean, there's no socials about it. There's no social. I and mean, the social, I mean, like we all rip it apart and stuff, but mm. it's a huge piece. Yeah. We, we sit at nights before we go to bed on our phones. Mm. We all do. Yeah. Um, and they've they've completely cut it. It's just really bizarre that yeah. they're making an effort to have a, a great website um, to have people go sign up. So yeah, we need more social media because that's how the yeah. world runs like I'm not, these days. Well, that's well for now. Yeah. So I'm mm. not saying that they, they they have to and stuff, but it'll be even. I mean, I know that they've started up their mailers. Did you get a mailer about it? No. I may They've have. been forced to do the mailers because the the social's gone. I'm a bad person to ask because I'm going to sign up for the open every single year because I yeah. believe in I believe in what it does for for yeah. the psychology and the community around it, performance. Yeah, yes. it would so, be cool to see direct versus uh, direct versus organic versus possibly paid versus referral from social as the, the signups from those each different channels. Mm -hmm. It'll be pretty cool. Yeah, but obviously we can't see that. Yeah. Um, and then we could actually have more insights. Yeah. So there's my question. So you said it now. You sign up for the Open, one, because it's a competitive thing for you. Yes. But also because you believe in what it does for people. Yeah. Um, I feel now, like it elevates people in their physical uh, capabilities and yeah. also their, their mental belief in themselves. In themselves. Yeah. See, see, my thought now, when I asked that question earlier about does it matter if the Open lives or dies, is that I don't believe that the top management at CrossFit share your view about the Open. I don't believe that they think it's a, it's something to elevate people. Um, I, I always thought that they did. In, in past years, there was, so much, uh, there was so much emphasis on, I got my first muscle up, I got my first handstand push up, I'm a better athlete, I'm a better person because I did the Open. Right. But uh, that but seems to have fallen away now. They, with they no content also. They don't believe that, uh, that the Open elevates people anymore. Which is fine. So the focus is more on just moving, moving uh, in the box. Do you think there's a question mark over this? Because over the past ten years, people have aspired more to become performance-based yes. rather than health-based. Yes. Uh, I mean, to bring it back to the core concept. Yes. So I think that Greg thinks that uh, we've moved away from from what CrossFit started to be is to create health, and we've moved too much into sport. Mm. And he's trying to say, look, guys, we're going we're gonna to de-emphasize the Open. We're going to de-emphasize the games. We're not going to put as much behind it. And we're going to focus more on health stuff. But then my question becomes, the health stuff is not very visible. Like Matt was saying, there's no more socials. There's the YouTube channel, which is, is not as big as Instagram. Yeah. Um, but there's hardly any, any health stuff visible. Like You can go through a week or a month and not see any CrossFit health stuff. So I'd really like it to... to be a focus. Yeah, it, it's important. I think it will it will only become a mainstream focus for CrossFitters when you can go to your box and you can have certain health markers measured and link that back to your CrossFit training and performance. So, yeah. for example, if there was a box doctor, every box had its had its its local uh, MD, and um, basically you rock up and they say, right, Courtney. Did you know that if you improve uh, your performances on Annie, Barbara, and Cindy, you will see a reduction in body fat, um, uh, increased circulation, um, blood oh, yeah. glucose markers, etc., etc. When those measurables become apparent and literally measurable by virtue of um, an easy, easily applied test, then people will start to understand the value in the health that CrossFit creates. Yeah. You know, we can all talk about, oh, I feel healthier. You've lost weight. You look stronger. All right. But there's no measure on it. Yeah. So like, is health sexy? No. Yeah. Because we're not measuring it and we're not attributing a value to it just yeah. yet. Yeah. Whereas performance up until now has been an, a, a, a more sort of 
interesting element to look at. Like, yeah. oh, my numbers went up here. The stats on this um, workout um, suggest that uh, every male has improved by 10%. Every female's only improved by 7%. Uh, blah, blah, blah. You okay. know? Uh, I don't know if you guys yeah. agree. Yeah. So I'd like to see more of the health stuff. If it's we... coming. I'm sure it's coming. It must be. It's definitely coming. It's such a big focus for HQ that it must be coming sometime. Well, I, mean, how, I mean, how cool would it be if you rocked up at, at, at the box and it was, became this one-stop shop for health and fitness? Yeah. Like, you don't have to go down to the clinic and sit in a queue of 10 people coughing um, with, like, tuberculosis and flu. Yeah. You kind of, like, rock up at your box where the average health mark is much higher. Yeah. And you just, you know, getting some uh, confirmation that you're moving in the right direction. Yeah. yeah. So I guess time will tell. Yeah. We'll see. They're well, working on it. They're doing some cool things. They're I doing think some we weird could, things. We could probably do another episode on CrossFit Health, but uh, we'll, we'll save that for another yeah. time. We'll yeah. maybe get so everything we said is um, all just opinions. And so uh, let's let's play a game and the, a guessing game. Now we're gonna guess how many open signups they're gonna be for this 2020. So last year, tw- well this year, 2019, there were 357,000. 357. So Matt, how many we're we gonna get 2020? 407,000. It's going up. Yes. Okay, Matt says it's going up to 407,000. Because of their um, great website. Yes, 407,000. 450,000. 450,000. Oh, I'm an optimist at heart. Uh, I'm going to be the pessimist. I'm saying it's going down again. <laughs> There's no way it's going to go up again. So, so is Matt the realist? No, I'm the realist. He's winning realist. this. Okay. I'm saying it's going down from 357 to 320,000. I've got uh, positivity because I'm sitting so close to you. It's rubbing off oh, on me. It's rubbing off. What am I going to do? He's like got a halo around him. <laughs> listen, like, yeah, um, listen, yeah. I've got a question. Yeah. Can we play this game? How cool would it be if a percentage of the open sign-up uh, uh, cash yeah. got redirected back to every box? To do? Health stuff. Or just money to buy, pockets? buy a bike erg, buy a, buy a new I think it would be uh, cool if they, if they said, here's a, here's a bit of money and uh, make sure it goes towards a certain thing, which is uh, equipment equipment that you're really suffering. There's lots of gyms that are missing stuff. I mean, we're lucky that we have a gym with everything. Yeah. So let's but say all 500 members across the three uh, Cape CrossFit chains sign up at $20. Yeah. A percentage of that should come back. Yeah. And... We can buy more 22.5 and 15 kg dumbbells so that we can have more people participate in the Open in the future. Yeah, I think Greg would argue that we should rather use the money to get a, a couple of MDs in and test people's blood pressure. Get some more lawyers uh, to um, take down Coca Cola and yeah, Pepsi this time. Pepsi, yes, <laughs> take yes. them down. But yeah, I think it's a cool idea, but maybe, maybe for more health things than for equipment things. Because I think people would argue that you've got to buy your own equipment, uh, you've got members mm. uh, that pay fees. So yeah, I think uh, that's an interesting one. So we'll see who wins at the end of the day. Whoever gets the most, whoever gets the closest to the, the sign-ups, they win. Everybody else gets 100 burpees. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I'm, I'm fuck. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. <laughs> Jeez. Yes. Uh, and sign up to the shit. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Matt, you got some listener feedback from Roger. Okay, so you guys want to move on to that. Roger was upset. We asked Roger, well, we asked for feedback on Instagram. And uh, we did get some feedback from Roger, and uh, he confused us. Yeah, we messed it up, and he was quite upset. He wrote <laughs> us a long email. Uh, dear He's so-called... Us. We, dear, uh, we've been sued. Yeah, let me read it for you. Dear yeah. so-called podcasters, uh, why did you mess up my question? That's not what I was saying at all. Uh, and then he sent his real question. His real question, which is... Um, one second. I've had a lot of messages come through on here. Jeez, you're so popular. I am very popular. Uh, I th- actually think it was on WhatsApp. I'm you? glad you're very prepared for the segment. It is. <laughs> okay, well, let's move on while I find it to... Uh, Justin, please explain the banger hinge. Really? Yeah. The they recipe. Didn't, they didn't get it the first time. They want to know the recipe. They want to use It's pretty it. simple. So, you buy a mash from Woolworths. <laughs> <laughs> you put it in the microwave yeah. for approximately four minutes, I think. Yeah. Uh, you add the, the salted butter on top. Yeah which is sensational when you mix it in. Yeah. Slap it on the plate when it's done. Uh, obviously, you pull the bangers out of the, the, the oven yeah. after a certain period of time. Yeah. Uh, you will most likely need a friend to help you monitor um, whether they've been in long enough or not. Uh, <laughs> you can't just look at it yourself. <laughs> no, because most males can only focus on one thing at a time. Okay. So when I make this recipe, I usually have my friend Andrew monitoring the bangers. Okay. And I'm doing the, the mash and the, the broccoli. Your brother-in-law. 
Uh, correct. <laughs> and um, essentially, you pull the, the broccoli uh, florets out of the steamer. Yeah. And uh, you slap that on the plate next to the mash. Yeah. Now, if you want to get creative, you can position the broccoli heads to look like some foliage on the side of the of of the the mash, which looks like the ground. Yeah. And then uh, you take the bangers and you position them vertically yeah. um, in a circle, and uh, you can place the extra bangers on top to to resemble Stonehenge. Okay. And then you're blessed with banger henge. Have you <laughs> ever thought about just making mashed potatoes with real potatoes? Fuck, that sounds like an effort. <laughs> uh, effort and dishes. And Jeez. Dishes, dishes, hardest part of the night. Jeez, you guys are lazy. Okay, thank you, Justin. Yeah. Moving on, I found it. Oh, good. Roger. Okay. <laughs> Agree or disagree that there are CrossFit movements which the average Joe has no business doing due to the reward-risk ratio being far too high? Handstand push-ups. Mm. Can we stop now? I don't, I don't want to do any more handstand push ups. <laughs> Sorry, Courtney, I can't hear you. Can you remove your neck brace? Oh, my neck brace. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've been in a car accident. <laughs> Listen, you should chat to your, your coach um, and basically ask them why they've let you perform your handstand push ups on your forehead. Listen, it's a loaded question. All right. I don't think Roger has a neck injury for starters. Secondly, no. He just wants and, uh, and in my experience, I've never seen the handstand push-up uh, resulting in like a neck fracture or an injury that would suggest that the average population should not do it. Mm -hmm. If you if you are progressed correctly and you're trained with the right form and technique, um, you will be fine. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So I'm gonna go practice my handstand push-ups. Yeah. Once, once I get out of the neck brace. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What um, else, what next question. Last one from the users. There's only one. Justin, I'm going to give you one more left. What? Hang on. Didn't Roger want to know about box jumps? Oh, so no. He was using his his question was um, doing move, movements that they should have no business doing. Sometimes they hit their shins. It hurts. Things like that. But it teaches you. Ring handstand push ups. <laughs> I mean, ring, are you ring. making your, your people do that? Ring handstand push ups. I tried that once. <laughs> I remember. Did you die? <laughs> he nearly the strap neck came loose. Oh, fuck. The strap yeah. came loose. And I did fall. Yeah. Uh, I did not hurt myself, but it came close. close. So, uh, based on that experience, I would absolutely not program that Never. or suggest that anybody Ever. even worries about trying. Yeah. Um, yes, we've seen it at the games, but even then, you guys would agree, I'm sure, that that was a horrific event to 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 judge. Yes. And also, it did not mm. it did not promote. A great movement patterns. No. For people at home, this was uh, put into the CrossFit Games, that movement. Yeah, so you, you do a muscle up and then you go upside down on and the rings and you, and you do like a handstand push up. A which handstand is, push up, which is well, already shitty against the wall. Holding onto the rings with your feet. Yeah. If I go to my grave and I never do that, I'll be happy. <laughs> I think I've, I'll have achieved something. I have not died. Okay, to move on, Justin, I'm going to give you 30 seconds to answer this. Okay. Um, to give a bit of context, Justin always wears skins. Mm. Um, he has his little, his little package, you can see it. <laughs> Sometimes you can see the shape of his willy. Um, Super and aerodynamic. <laughs> uh, Mark, Mark Fawzi, um, yeah. owner of BoxChamp, wants to know, can we discuss Justin's skins? Justin, you have 30 seconds and go. If you've ever tried Olympic weightlifting with shorts on, uh, you will very quickly come to realize that there's a necessary friction and uh, disruption with the bar path. So it stems mainly from that. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, why would you want anything to hold you back in your in your endeavor to be uh, performing at your best? Okay, so on what percentage do you think it adds to your performance? <laughs> Five seconds. At least 10%. <laughs> at least 10%. There we go, Mark. That's 10% yeah, performance. Mark, try that. Try skins. <laughs> okay. We are going to move on to the topic of the day. Justin, tell us, since you read the Google Doc. Yes. The topic Fuck. of the day is functional movement patterns and the history of how it came to be such. Uh, that's all you read. <laughs> <laughs> you read the title. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we read some articles. Yeah, we pretty much read some articles. Uh, so I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about what I read. Yes. And Matt's going to jump in here because Matt read lots of things about Hippocrates and stuff like that. Hypocrisy. 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 <laughs> I, um, Hypocrisy. I've lost it now. Oh. He's lost it. Fuck. Get this man a new phone. 
Oh, this one Guys, we're going to start... Did you take uh, a sleeping tablet last night? <laughs> <laughs> we're going to start asking people for things. Can we're going to make a Patreon page Patreon and could you all put uh, maybe uh, 5,000 Rand each into it? To get Matt a phone. We need a new phone. We'd iPhone also 11. like to travel to the games. Yeah. All, all values from high to low. <laughs> we'll take 5 Rand, uh, 5,500 Rand. Yeah, to 5 million. Debt. 5 million. Even mm. if you have some old brown five cent coins yeah. uh, yes. we have a jar <laughs> that we'll place up. at the power bar take at Camp CrossFit. guys I need to pay off my home loan <laughs> please <laughs> give me money <laughs> okay. it's, it's true so basically the history of functional fitness and then how we got to where we are and if Greg Glassman invented it we, we'll find out today mm. so didn't Chris mm. Walsh invent Chris it Chris Walsh <laughs> invented it <laughs> he did <laughs> that's what he told me I saw him and he was like Courtney you won't believe this what I just invented is called functional fitness. Yeah. Oh, really, Chris? It's oh, mine. That's amazing. <laughs> I've never heard of that. So anyway, back in the day, uh, a couple of years ago, um, when there was uh, a Paleolithic man. Wait, yeah? wait, wait. Aren't you going to say what functional training is first? No. No, we're going to explain it later. I don't care what you have to say. I'm going to talk about Paleolithic Courtney's man. Courtney's running this podcast. <laughs> You're just a bystander. <laughs> just right now, they don't know what you're explaining to <laughs> Matthew's currently scrolling on his phone. Yes, I just found my part. That's all. <laughs> so, aimlessly. Like, uh, back in the day, when we had the continent of Pangaea. Mm. In, when all uh, the continents were together. Yes. Yeah, no, one ball. So, there was, uh, there was man. Um, Homo <laughs> sapiens. Mm-hmm. And Weren't they called Homo erectus? There was probably Neanderthals around at the same Homo time. Homo erectus? Erectus, Neanderthals. Homo sapiens and the Devonians, I think. Devonians, okay. extra. I think they the were Devonians had Co- the teeth. Courtney's been reading <laughs> <I'm> Sapiens. <not laughs> sure. So I was reading Sapiens. So now I'm just, uh, I'm just quoting things from Sapiens. So anyway, back in the day, they didn't worry about functional fitness. They had to hunt animals. Mm. Eat them. Mammoths. Mammoths. Uh, massive mm. things. The ground sloths. Okay. Uh, they're not very fast. <laughs> really? Yeah, you didn't need to be functionally fit to catch that thing. It was big. It was so slow. <laughs> it just pick it up like you're plucking a flower off the ground. Oh, they were heavy. They had to carry them. After they just hunted them down. Apparently, there were these ground sloths in Australia. This is off the topic. And then after... Uh, uh, Homo sapiens made it to Australia. They just destroyed these ground sloths. Mm. They just wiped them out like quick, quick. So they like, moved into the trees and became koalas. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that's it. Did you get it? Did you? <laughs> that's it. They couldn't catch the koalas. They were so high. And these guys were not functionally fit. It's evolution. And like, guys, we can only get the ground sloths. We can't get the koalas. <laughs> So they survived. <laughs> <laughs> so have you also been reading Sapiens? Uh, I read the blurb. The blurb. <laughs> yeah, Justin did a quick one. On <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay. So anyway, that's a partial fact. Anyway, so these, you had to be uh, functionally fit to run after the ground sloths. All right. Then, 10,000 years ago, which is a long time ago, we invented agriculture. Okay. And then we didn't have to be functionally fit anymore. Mm-mm. We had just had to do manual labor. So we walked around, pushed the plow, uh, used the, the hoe, used the hoe, <laughs> yes, yeah. the hoe. Yeah, and uh, and we invented like things like ladders. So instead of having to climb a tree, which is all like wonky and stuff, are we mm-hmm. in the industrial revolution now? No, not yet. We're getting there. So instead of like climbing little wonky trees, mm-hmm. we just built ladders, and the ladder it just had to climb up and down, and we. We mm. lost some of our little functional fitness thingies. This was the yes. downfall of humans. This was the beginning of the end. Yeah. The beginning of the end. So we yeah. stopped in the middle this of it now. we stopped using our thumbs. Yeah. Our thumbs, yes. This is when we started dirtying the atmosphere and building shitty things. Yes. The and carbon dioxide. Uh, carbon dioxide, yeah. Chlorofluorocarbons. The CFCs. Yeah, I remember those. I think we got rid of those. <laughs> looking at me for approval. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> He's right. That's when all He's the right. fridges and the aerosol cans <laughs> yeah. destroyed the atmosphere. That was 10,000 BC. Do you know, how I, when I was younger, I panicked at the fact that there was a hole in the atmosphere. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, every little bit of... Um, it's like a media uh, scare uh, tactic. Uh, oh, uh, man. Content I read around the atmosphere was that this, there was this hole. It was getting bigger. And eventually, the sun's rays were going to come through and give everyone cancer. Yeah. Or just poof, poof. Like, it was exactly a f- funny, funny story. There's this girl the other day. I won't mention her name. She doesn't listen to this podcast. But anyway, she said... This is a science graduate, not Chelsea. Yes. This is someone else. She's a science graduate. She said to me, I saw this picture on Instagram and it showed a hole in the ozone layer. 
and they showed us that oh, this is no. the hole in the ozone layer. I said, what is the ozone layer made out of? It's made out of ozone. What is ozone? It's O3. It's three yes. oxygen molecules. Yes. Have you ever seen an oxygen molecule in your life? No. <laughs> You've never seen an oxygen molecule. You cannot see a hole in the, in the sky. <laughs> so what? Was she looking up at the sky trying write, to figure out where she, it was? Did she point at it? What did she look no, at? No, she just saw a picture on Instagram because these kids believe everything. You can't see oxygen, guys. You can't see the <laughs> hole in the ozone. But layer. if you take tinfoil and you look through it, <laughs> you can. No, it's actually a, a piece of... Um, uh, uh, tea bag, tea bag, the tea bag covering, <laughs> and you have to <laughs> fold two of them together and look the through. foil. Yeah, the foil. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Have you looked through tin foil? <laughs> 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 what can you see? Partial fact. Partial Instagram fact number three. Said, Look through tinfoil. No, 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 no. And put it on your head. It's before you do it. <laughs> I'm almost convinced that back in the day, yeah. they said you could take like two toilet rolls, yeah. <laughs> put them together, Make binoculars. and then take, take the foil. It's a tea bag foil. Tea, tea bag foil. What is tea bag foil? It's oh, the, the what the tea one. bags come in. Yes. Like that, that dark. Uh, yes. You can look through that. Tin foil is quite thick, Justin. You can't see through it yeah, very yeah. easily. Tin foil, tea bag foil, slightly different, <laughs> yes. yet similar. It's similar. But I know what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. And then, and I thought about this, and I thought to myself, this is very dangerous. Yeah. I mean, imagine there was like a yeah. little hole in the tea bag foil. Yeah. And, and there you oil. are, you're looking at the sun. And you just kept looking. You didn't stop when you <laughs> saw the little hole. That's the end of you. Burning a nice hole through the side. <laughs> no, no, no. We're talking about this solar eclipse now. <laughs> we are. <laughs> we've really gone off topic. Know, it's we're take us back it's the same as we now in fucking rush hour again, like the last episode. Take yeah. us back to the ladder story. Yes, okay. Forget the ladder story. Now we've gone from 10,000 BC to 4,000 BC. 4,000 years before Christ. Now we have the Greeks and the Romans. And they had functional fitness, in inverted commas, to prepare for war. So they liked war, the Greeks and Romans. They liked to conquer people. Mm. Uh, and so they did uh, war things and then they did stuff like the javelin and the discus and mm. they threw stones and they did like fighting and wrestling you think and stuff. the discus was a weapon back I think in the so day. you could probably knock someone really you could knock them out with imagine the discus. hitting someone in the yeah. Adam's apple oh, I wonder what the, the success discus. rates of it <laughs> so guys you're all just going to throw a discus guys we're going to line up yes and throw a big enemies things. over there and we're going to spin and <laughs> 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 you know what? The discus probably came first. Then yeah. they realized the hit rate was very poor. Yeah, so and they, then moved like into the, they moved into the shot put. The shot put. Yeah. Yes. Now yeah. we got some accuracy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. I mean, if you think about it, a shot put was probably um, a, a fail safe for when you couldn't get the gunpowder into the cannon fast enough. You just threw the bullet. <laughs> <laughs> so you, picked, little, you little, picked up the cannon. <laughs> they're throwing little bullets like throwing a grape at people. <laughs> <laughs> or did they have the cannonball next to them? No, they must have. They must have had like a, a pile of cannonballs. It was so and heavy. The one oak's busy pumping in the ball, the other yeah. oak's putting in the gunpowder. Yeah. This oak gets taken out by a javelin. Yeah. Or a spear. Yeah. And then you panic. So you pick up you pick up the shot put or the cannonball. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And you go for it. And you go for it. <laughs> how, how close is the enemy that you can hit him? <laughs> it's like it's mid run with a spear. It's like five meters away. <laughs> the other guy's like, fuck, Justin's taken my fucking cannonball. All I got is the little uh, bullets to throw at him. <laughs> yes. Like throwing marbles at the enemy. The guy's like, fuck. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> the guy around you stop it. Dude, my face. It's like, stop it, stop it. It's like shooting a fly away. <laughs> Listen, you can take someone's eye out with a marble. Oh, Justin always finding the positive. He's still, he's still thinking like this is gonna work. <laughs> oh jeez. It was like David and Goliath. Just one lucky shot. There we go. So anyway, then they did like the javelin, the the, the shot puts, and they also did lots of uh, fighting. So like uh, wrestling and stuff. Mm, MMA. Yeah, basically it was Greek MMA, which was like, uh, that's very functional, because hmm. you've got you to gotta win wars. Uh, and that was in like 4000 BC. And then I think things were quiet. There was, uh, oh, when Jesus was around, he was like, guys, just relax. And then they didn't do much of that stuff. And then uh, for like a thousand years afterwards, they were like, okay, cool, we're going to be chilled. And uh, they stopped all that. Okay. Then they got guns and they were like, we don't need to be functional, we're just going to shoot people. Um, and then in the 1500s, there was the first book on sports medicine. But hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's just talk about that guns scenario. Yeah, yeah. I've seen movies yeah. where the one team lines up, yeah. other team lines up, yeah. 
mm-hmm. and the two guys meet in the middle. Yeah. They shake hands or whatever. They say, right, we're going to fight now. Oh, mm-hmm. these teams. And they're, 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 they're sports. You, you mean uh, just enemies? Armies. Enemies, yeah. Armies, yeah. Oh, they walk yeah. back to their side. Yeah. Everyone loads their gun. Yeah. And they go, three, two, one, fire. Boom. And then X amount of people die. Yeah. And you just hope that your team was more accurate than the other. Yes. Yeah, I think it was just a numbers game also. That's, that's you a just ridiculous. hope you load yeah. and that you yeah, you your your second wave guys, I'm assuming they would have chosen they would be the strongest or yes. they would be the archers or whatever. Yeah, mm-hmm. the javelin throws from, yeah. from yes, a few years jab- back. Javelin throws. And yeah. then the marble throws were next. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, after that you got your shot. Put. <laughs> And you right, just right, right, right in the back, because right in the back you got fucked. the MMA fighters. Yes, and by the end everyone's run out of bullets and stuff. So you just start fighting. <laughs> it sounds like it sounds like suicide. No, it's no. like I, this. Matt, we're going to war today. It's basically just saying, right, get 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 all your friends. Tell Courtney yeah, we're going to go die. Yeah, and then uh, I'll call in sick. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, I'm sick today. Yeah, I'm sick today. I can't come. This this is a, this is a topic for another day. But that's like how strong patriotism is. You know, yeah. you can yeah. like fuck. I'm gonna fucking fucking kill myself for my country. No, no thanks. I'm gonna stand in the front line and get shot. Yeah, yeah. I'm no. going to heaven. Oh, no, that's <laughs> yes. okay. I don't, I don't through do the that. ozone layer in the sky. Yeah. <laughs> through the hole. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. I'm not going to die for my country. Guys, it's okay. I'll survive. You guys go. What happens <laughs> if, if um, what's his name? Cyril phones you, Courtney, and yeah. says, Courtney, listen, we're having a problem yeah. on the front line. Yeah. Uh, we need you to die for your country. I'm going to tell him that I can't because I have to CrossFit at 9 to, to, nine to 10. That's open gym. Yes, and I can't. after that, make I have it. to go make lunch. Yes, for so my boy. I can't, I can't make it. <laughs> so we bug it here no, in South uh, Africa. And then he Sorry, says, uh, like, do you have anyone else's number that might be interested in this offer? And I said, yes, <laughs> Justin. <laughs> Justin Swartzky. He's, he's got marbles. <laughs> he's got marbles. <laughs> and a uh, catapult to catch him. Yeah. yeah. So no, I'm not going to make it. So 1500, we started to have sports medicine. And this guy wrote a book. I don't know who it was. And then in the 1700s, this is Matt's favorite part, the Industrial Revolution. <laughs> so we started to have lots of machines and stuff and then we became really really lazy and so we moved away from from just doing functional fitness because we had to do stuff like mm. plow the fields and, and climb trees and now we made a sport out of it because we were so lazy that that uh, with machines did everything so now we had to make it into a sport before it was just like doing stuff because we needed to do stuff mm. And this was in the 1700s. This is where the the slouch posture originated. Yes, from. that's what I've got because I work at a desk all day um, yeah. Is that a partial fact? Or is that actually really happening? No, that's a partial fact. But if you think about it, in the Industrial Revolution, that's when people started moving into factories and <coughs> like, sitting, okay, sitting okay, down, yeah. uh, climbing chimneys. Yeah, you know, climbing like, chimneys. Yeah, climbing chimneys, yeah. You've got to be fit for that. <laughs> you've you got to be fit. But think about the positions you've got to be in scrubbing yeah. the chimney. Like, that can't be good for your joints. <laughs> you've got to be able to sing as well. <laughs> <laughs> sing and dance. Sing and dance. On yeah. the roof. Yeah. And then in the 1800s, they invented the Highland Games. In Scotland, which is... Uh, oh, and they're throwing logs. Yes, cabers. Cabers, they call them. Is that what like, they're called? Yeah, it's oh, like a, a tree. A caber. Uh, and you run and you throw the tree. I'm not sure what for. I only know this from the lunch bar ads. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. What kind of a mac are you? <laughs> I'm a macatini. <laughs> uh, yeah. And we also did like stone lifting. Yes. So I think like after... Uh, this is also like a partial fact. After the Vikings, and they were finished, like, like killing people and stuff, they, were, they just became farmers, and then now we had to prove our fitness by lifting stones. Full stacker. Full stacker. Yeah, that uh, rogue movie. Oh, yes. It's yeah. Just, yeah. Um, just pa- pans of uh, landscapes for an hour. Isn't it? <laughs> yes. Yes, and at the end they show you how they pick up a rock. Yes, done. 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 Good. Credits. Credits. So we're going to do that as well, after this. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, also in the 1800s, our friend Charles... Uh, Darwin, not Charles Poliquin, uh, he talked about survival of the fittest. And then people were really excited about the survival of the fittest idea. And then they started to test themselves against other people because they thought, if I'm the fittest on earth, uh, um, I'll co- live for longer. Copyright. Yeah, they'll live for longer. So then they started to like test themselves against other people. Um, that was in the 1800s, I think like the mid-1800s. And then uh, in the 1900s, they took it even further and they started to open up gyms. So apparently there was this guy in France, uh, I forgot his name, and he started to open up gyms in the, the early 1900s, and that's brought us to, to where we are today. 
Yeah. Was that uh, Virgin Active? Virgin Active. It was Richard Branson. No, hang on, <laughs> hang on, hang on. Health and Racket came first. Yes, yes. I remember those days. Uh, Health and Racket. I used to have me- be a member. I had my dad's hoodie. I remember my parents wouldn't take me to Health and Racket because it was too far. Really? They wouldn't drive me from Milnerton to Blobick. <laughs> they had one. That's like five kilometers. Yeah, they said, no, sorry, you can't go swim there. You've yeah. got to go swim at school. Oh, that was fine. At least your school had a pool. We, me and Matt went to a terrible school with no pool. Where did you guys go? To Bergfleet. Bergfleet. No, there's no pool there. Uh, the no primary pool. school had a pool. Is there no pool still? No, there's still no pool. Oh, we used to go over to the primary school. Yeah, the primary school. Yeah. For the gala day, I'll just sit under the benches. Maybe we can redirect yeah. some of the funds from Patreon to get that to school or pool. A, a school. Yes, yeah. we're definitely going to share our money. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Damn positive Justin. <laughs> you really fucked us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and then we started getting physique competitions. And, and guys like Charles Atlas. Mm. Uh, and uh, the Mr. Olympia. Yes, that's where the Atlas Stones come from. Is it? Really? It must be the Atlas Stone. I thought it was just called Atlas Stone because Atlas was like a. Atlas the earth. holds the earth like our logo. Yeah, like the logo. Yeah. Oh. Well, well, well partial fact, fact I'm going to go and say that Charles Atlas uh, was really good at picking up the stones. Yeah. And they named it after him. Well, that's okay. a good one because it's. Uh, yeah. Because yeah. it's the same name. That's it's why the it's the same name. One. It's a good one to yeah. debate. Yeah. And there we then. Go. Uh, so that brought us to where we are today, and then Greg Glassman invented uh, functional fitness, actually. After all of me <laughs> telling you for 20 minutes how uh, functional fitness got started, actually, uh, that was a lie. Did your article say anything about Randy Hetrick? Lan- Randy? Hetrick. Ran- Randy Hetrick. No, no who's no. that? Carry on. No, carry on. I'll get to it. No, no, I don't know anything about that. That's the end okay. of my article. Oh, 75 snatches so the, the for time. <laughs> 75 what's that Randy oh, yeah, Randy oh no 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 that's a different Randy uh, what is that is that a workout that's yeah. goddamn CrossFit still Justin talking about CrossFit it's a what why would you want to snatch 75 75 yeah. for time what's, yeah. a, what's the weight on the bar it's very light it's light yeah it's a back killer yeah, it's, it's like, like 43 fucked, yeah. 29 34 something most like guys this. get through it without um, 4, 29 40, being, um, oh, just muscle snatching yeah. 75 times mm. no I think uh it was a few of the guys just like they end up like all mushy at the end. They don't even hold snatch grip; they hold like yeah. a clean grip, and they yeah. just oh, go for it. Oh, all those Bronislav kind of guys. Yes, I was going to say. It was a regional workout not so long ago. Oh, no, um, I'm so th- I'm not going to do all the stuff I've read yet. It's it's a duplicate of kind of a duplicate of yours. But this guy went into all sorts of um, names of like physiotherapists and people. We don't need but, to hear that. No, we don't need to hear it. One thing that he did say is that um, the inventor, apparently, of all of this, the the turning point was. Um, uh, Hippocrates. 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 Yeah. Who uh, now I've lost it. But um, he was the father of medicine as well. So that's the whole thing. But before all this whole sport vibe, uh, functional training was looked at looked at a medicinal yeah. type of point of view. Yeah. It was to you know I'll be help you move and all that shit. Um, and he used to use a um, he asked patients to pass a med ball to each other. Um, it's from this that it's ball. believed that he invented it. The med ball. I don't know. Uh, I don't think the med ball. The actual idea of using this as a medicinal movement, yeah. and then that's where the whole uh, physiotherapy vibe and all that's yeah. you know, over the years everything expanded. I'm not going to go into into all this. It was a good article. Um, so what I know about Hippocrates is that he was the Hippocratic Oath guy. Remember that uh, doctors take when did they, they use the exact same the thing, words. or was it been? Uh, like down the line and changed I, I don't know if they've changed it or not but I was in the ceremony once and then they all had to stand up yeah. and say the oath is it? yeah because um, back then they probably cut legs off um, yes. with no uh, but I think it's like first do no harm that's like the oath so it's it, it's so broad it could just stay don't yeah. hurt anyone don't hurt anybody yeah. guys but he said it in a nicer way <laughs> yeah so that's Hippocrates I won't hurt anyone thou shall not do thou any shall. harm anyway so where you got to Greg Glassman, which is, uh, it's a good question, or it's a good thing that Greg didn't invi- invent it, and CrossFit is actually just a word. L- let's just bring it back to the simple fact, are you capable to lead a healthy life with the general demands, such as, can I bend over to tie my shoelaces? Can mm. I squat down mm. to pick up my kid? Yeah. Can I rotate from left to right mm-hmm. to put my uh, seatbelt on? Can I climb a flight of stairs without collapsing? Can I, um, what else? Pick up um, a Tupperware of mashed potato and bangers and put it on the top shelf. Yeah. Okay. So why don't you tell us, Justin, what the, the basics of functional fitness is? So according to our prepared document, yeah. it says <laughs> limited use of machines. Yeah. Obviously. Except for barbells. 
Yes, we know that from the Industrial Revolution, when the machines came in, that, uh, that ruined everything. Yeah. Major muscle groups, large muscle groups, do you mean compound training? Yeah, so we're not, like, we don't do many bicep curls in functional fitness. Yeah, so we don't want to use isolated muscle groups. Yeah. yeah. Like calf raises. Yeah, although it'd be nice to have big calves. That's genetic. Oh, Sorry, I'm never gonna, <laughs> <laughs> hey, so I'm yeah. never gonna get big yeah. calves. Yeah. I mean, you could try a strongman sport like truck pulling and see what that does for you. Yeah, I could ride a bicycle. Or ride a bicycle. Yeah. What about uh, pogo stick? Does that make you get big calves? For calf development. Oh, well, we might buy one then. Yeah, we we'll have to get one. Or well, maybe a listener will send with us With the one. Patreon money. Yes. But pogo stick is basically like doing double enders. You're just jumping up and down. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. a glorified version. Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. tell us some other things about. Uh, how would, I, how would I know that I'm doing functional fitness? You would develop a greater range of motion. Yeah. So like I shouldn't sit down and do uh, presses. I should probably do standing presses. Yeah, I, I guess. I, or how about, how about this to be more precise? Uh, when you can take the dumbbell down to your shoulder, why would you stop at your ear? Yeah, you go a full range of motion. Full range of motion. Yeah. If you're going to do a push-up, Get your chest to the floor because if you were to be running in the rain and fall on your face, you would press yourself up from the ground. You wouldn't press yourself up from midair. Yes. Does that make sense? That I've got sense. The, the definition from the article I read. It's ability to perform tasks in everyday life. It, this is what distinguishes it from powerlifting and weightlifting. It's more hey, weightlifting is functional. Mm, Who said that? It's a more medicinal approach. It's often a standalone field for those recovering from injury, those new to the gym, and Oftentimes, professional athletes looking for competitive edge. Competitive edge, yeah. Mm. So I would say if, you, if you're not supported in any way, so like if you're standing free or if you're hanging free from something or if you're moving your body through space, that to me, that's functional. Mm. Of course. Just, I think uh, some people have argued that CrossFit, because it's a, a group training exercise, it's not individualized. And mm -hmm. to an extent, that's true, but to an extent, it's not really necessary. Listen, I mean, if, you, if we're speaking specifically about like, helping people understand functional movement and functional patterns, you need to be able to move as an individual uh, in, order to be, in order to move within a group. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, like, with, I mean, we'll tackle it s simply from that perspective. Like, if I rock up at the gym and I perform certain movements, I should develop a certain level of functionality so that when I get presented with a task as an individual... I can look after myself. Yeah. yeah, I can fend for myself. I can perform basic tasks yeah. without injuring yeah. my body. But also, like I was thinking, bodybuilding is not the enemy. Like doing no, some of not. bodybuilding stuff and getting strong. I think there's because people think we're being functional. We can't do curls. Mm -hmm. We can't do bench press. Like bodybuilding is not the enemy, but you should you shouldn't focus only only on, on one thing. As with anything. Yeah, I think I think it's just making people understand that if they were to. Uh, if they were to choose or they would be forced into a situation where like, right, are you going to do bicep curls or are you going to do sumo deadlift high pulls? Mm. The sumo deadlift high pull is way more functional mm. than yeah. a bicep curl. Um, yeah. Or even a legless rope climb for that matter. Can you guys yeah. name uh, what the what image or of, or of someone doing something silly uh, associates with functional fitness? BOSU ball. Yes. Balancing on a BOSU ball. With? With a barbell. Correct. On your back. Yeah. Mm. Doing Everyone, squats. it's got such a bad rap. Doing squats on a BOSU ball with a barbell on your back. Yeah. That's not essentially what it means. No. Functional. That's fitness. a madness. Yes. That's just asking That's, for Don't trouble. do that silly stuff. Or just trying to stand on a Swiss ball. Mm. Yeah. So, I asked you before about Randy Hetrick. Um, so, there was two dudes that actually um, kind of uh, started, what's the <clears> word, <throat> revolutionizing it. Let's see. Um, in its place, it came in the likes of CrossFit and TRX which provides the benefits of functional training and a significant amount of strength as well. So CrossFit, obviously, Greg cottoned onto this and he uh, made his own little whole program about it. Then Randy also did with his TRX ropes. You know those ropes you hang yes. from the roof? So Randy says, <clears throat> Through TRX, you're better able to manage your body in an unstable circum circumstance, which is just like sports. Think about it. I can crush the most elite MMA fighter on earth with these silly straps, and your wife likes it too. Yes, your wife likes it. Um, so I think two, two quick things before we, we close, just because we're running out of time. Yes. One thing is, let's name some <coughs> things. So I'm at the Virgin Active now. I'm not a member of a CrossFit gym or anything like that. I want to I wanna do some functional exercises. Can you give me a, a list of some? And then the last thing is, 
question, has CrossFit perfected functional exercise or is there a way we could improve on it? So let's do the first one first. Cool. Some exercise uh, examples for functional fitness. Go, Justin. Would Courtney, I can leave the room. Yes. Name them. <laughs> Air squats, push-ups, pull-ups, box step-ups, dumbbell presses, um, deadlifts, farmer's carry, uh, bear crawling, uh, kettlebells, or any movement with a kettlebell really. Um, there's, there's so many. Yeah, pull-ups. Pull-ups, absolutely. Strict pull-ups, uh, mm -hmm. and then when you can do strict, move on to kipping. Mm -hmm. So I think that's quite a good list. Um, if, if I was to go to Virgin Active, I'd get something loose, like uh, some a machine that's not tied down. You go to Virgin Active to get loose. I mean, uh, <laughs> get loose. What do you mean, <laughs> yes. like a machine you can like a like a yeah a ski yoke? Well, a, a ski yoke too, I guess, but that's that's like cardio and structural stuff. You what mean, do you mean? Like you a, get like a slam ball? No, no. So if I was going to go to Virgin Active or any any gym. And I said, I want to do some functional training. How do I know what to do? The first thing I would do is I would not take any machine that's tied to the uh, I see what you mean. Like so, a bodybuilding machine. Yes, yeah, so I take any equipment that I can move. Then mm. I'd be like, okay, I'm going to move through space with this piece of equipment. And get yeah, loose. That's, and get loose. Get loose. Get loose. So that's, that's, the, that's the way to know. If can't go so, wrong with a uh, barbell and some weights on Yeah, people yeah. are taking cliff notes now. So number yeah. one, get loose. Get loose. Number yes. two, use a machine that's not stuck on the ground. Number three, uh, have fun. Have fun. Major muscle groups. Use use big muscle groups. Yes. And go so, home and sleep for nine hours. And sleep for nine hours. Like instead of doing uh, curls, <laughs> instead of doing leg presses, which is a machine that's tied to the ground, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, you could do thrusters. So you're not yeah. tied to the ground, you're standing free or and you're pushing weights and, and using your legs. cleans or something like that. Yeah. cleans, stuff like that. Yeah. So don't tie yourself to a machine. Go why, squats. why are these machines tied to the ground? Uh, How so old is this virgin actually? <laughs> yes, <laughs> they're, they're nailed down. I mean, most gyms I've been to, the equipment's uh, bolted to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> These ones are tied. They just have ropes. Are you, you got to come you, to Concentra Virgin Active. Yeah. Yeah. Come there. Are you at a camping site? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Could he's going back to the sapien times? Sapien. Homo sapien, the Neanderthal times. I yeah, see, yeah, I yeah. see. <laughs> so our last thing, just, do you think CrossFit has perfected functional fitness? Yes, I think. There's nowhere else to go. Listen, there was, a, there was, I think, functional fitness, uh, if we can go back to a time before CrossFit, was there was this buzz around the word functional, and everyone was doing something more functional than the next. You know, it, was, it, it, it almost became its own little elitist competition, uh, similar to what Greg is trying to avoid now with CrossFit, in that people were trying to outdo each other with how ridiculous they could make the concept of functional training, yeah. like Matt alluded to. Like, can you balance on one leg, pick up a kettlebell, rotate through the midline, press it above your head, and then throw it five meters? You know, like, yeah. you, you can really be obtuse about it. But the point is, um, the, I think people lost sight of what they were actually trying to achieve. Yeah. I think people, like I said, were more putting on a show, uh, especially uh, from a social media perspective, um, than worrying about whether they could make Courtney's range of motion in his hips greater through doing uh, box step ups over varied heights over uh, a period of a few weeks yeah. so that he can improve his hiking experience yeah. when he goes up Table Mountain with his kid. Yeah. You know, like did the training stimulus result in a more functional pattern? Yeah. Uh, hopefully. And I think CrossFit's done a fantastic job at packaging that for coaches and clients um, in a way that is measurable, repeatable, and safe. Yeah. So nice. I think uh, we're going to wrap it up there. Yeah. But guys, let us know, do you think that CrossFit has perfected functional fitness? Is there anything uh, you would add to it, any ways you would change it? Mm. Maybe you, you're a guy in Virgin Active doing other stuff and you think that that's better than CrossFit. Let us know um, and uh, we can chat about it in the future. Yeah, mm. we're open to anything. We're open to anything. But that's all we have for today, Matt. Yeah. Guys. Where are you going to find us? You tell us, Justin. Instagram at no Rex podcast. Yep. Courtney, what's the email address? Uh, no Rex media at gmail.com. And what is the website, Justin? The what website. website? Uh, well, the main uh, hosting site. Yeah. Libsyn. Yes. Libsyn. Yeah, but you can find us on all your favorite podcasts. L I B S Y N. Yeah. Yes. No, use... no results, only excuses. Dot Libsyn dot com. Yeah, but I use Overcast. I think Overcast mm. is the best podcast app in the world. I have Pocket Cast, and Pocket I can't Cast. find our own podcast in Pocket Cast. That's rubbish. I Delete don't know that. why. I can't figure it out. I, I just downloaded Apple Podcasts on my phone. Yeah. Also, find us there. Simple. 
Yeah. Spotify. Some people have subscribed on Spotify. Spotify. We've actually got a lot of listeners on Spotify. Fucking the few that we have, yeah, a lot 14. of them are from yeah. fourteen. <laughs> so, so seven of them are from Spotify. <laughs> yes. Excellent. Have used Spotify, yeah. and surprisingly, we, we do have a YouTube channel. And people listen through YouTube, oh, so subscribe. Nice. Go yeah. nuts. Thanks, guys. Thank See you. you next time. Bye bye. Roll outro music. Bye bye.